Hello, uh, can you hear me? There we go. It's finally working. I mean, yeah, I'm so glad you could make it. I mean, the first thing I really ask is just, where are you calling from? Uh, Texas. Fullerton. From Chickia. Seattle. Arkansas. Vancouver, BC. Louisiana. And wherever you're tuning in from, welcome to Milky Narder. Hi. If you're new here, my name is Spencer Chan, and this is my podcast, Milky and Ardor. Every week, I interview people from around the world and hear people's life lessons that they've learned, the experiences they face, and the passions they're pursuing. If this sounds interesting to you at all, please be sure to share with your friends, family, or whoever you could think of so we could share as many possible stories to as many people as possible. On this week's episode, episode 20 of Milky and Ardor, we are going to be hearing from Orjana Ken. Now, before I go into everything, Cut the music. You see, the whole purpose of Milking Ardor is to spread empathy through the stories that are being told on my podcast. Now, I understand that there are certain triggers. People have different triggers in the world. And with my interview with Orjana Ken, today's guest, we're talking about the Saugus High School school shooting. It's a tough one. Uh... I don't want to go too much into it, but I'm going to play this clip so you could kind of get an idea of what is to come. But just know, if you are very sensitive or just sensitive to school shootings or this type of field, proceed with caution. Saugus High School has more than 2,000 students and it conducts regular lockdown drills. But many students say they never thought they would have to put their training to use. That all changed when they heard yesterday's gunfire. Thank you so much again, Orjana, for just taking the time to chat with me today. <laughs> of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> right on. Um, let's see. All right. So the first thing I normally ask, Orjana, is just, what's your name and where are you calling from? Um, my name is Orjana Kent, and I'm calling from Santa Clarita Valley. Right on. And Orjana, what is the elevator pitch of you? You know, if I were to go on the street and just see on the stream like hey that person looks really cool i'm gonna introduce myself and i say hey my name's spencer nice to meet you what's what's your name and what's your deal um well i mean i don't know what be like what's up homie <laughs> like that's <just> kind <laughs> of me i'm very let loose uh i'm re- i'm really loose um, if i was to like explain a little bit about myself i would say i'm a very musically inclined person i love the performing arts and um very much talking to people it's the thing i like to do uh so it really sucks that we're inside because <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i totally get that would you i mean how did you how did you get into performing arts and just that type of field well, yeah well when i was younger my mom said i was born singing so mm. just <laughs> always been i've always been singing playing the piano dancing um and then i got into more of like the theatrics so like filming interviewing people editing uh i do i do a lot actually in the performing arts so pretty much i dabble in every section i try to do uh... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the drive is for you to kind of be doing all of that stuff i like i like being out there honestly i like um uh, i think it's very interesting because when people meet me sometimes I can be very stoic and like a very Mm. business person and then they get (laughs) me and it's like I think very interesting um to kind of like show the inner shell of myself and perform for others because I like making people happy and I really as much as I do it for myself I also do it for others Mm. or John has there been like a time in your life where you really felt like you had to be the anchor for other people to to lift yeah. them up yes um a lot of times I feel like sometimes I do forget to take care of myself a lot and um sometimes in my life like I'll be focusing so much on helping others because <laughs> I do feel I do have a lot of empathy for people like if one of my friends are sad or something's going on in their life I'm, I typically tend to be sad because I'm sad for them and so I try yeah. to always uplift others because I want people to be happy what has been, and it's going to be a little personal, what has been one of the more harder <laughs> things you've had to really help people with and help people overcome? Oh, well, 
honestly, like, I don't want to get into the story yet because we asked, but just like that, uh, the, the day of the shooting was one really thing that was like the hardest day for me personally. Um, because a lot of times when I'm helping people, it's mostly advice and, and I'll be like, we won't talk about it much in person. So yeah. when I actually had to take a step up in person was really hard. Why don't we transition to, to that? I mean, I know it's, it's going to be like real heavy and um, <laughs> I definitely do know before releasing this, I'm going to put like a huge trigger warning, but uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. What? What is the shooting? So on November 14th, it was so um, of 2019, uh, the Saga shooting happened and um, it was a pretty crazy. Th uh, yeah, some kid decided to go into Saugus and started doing something really crazy. Um, and I wasn't at Saugus. I went to, I'm going to a neighbor school. It's called the neighbor high school because it's 10 minutes away. So we did feel the effects of the lockdown and everything. So it's a very interesting story from the side that, from a different perspective. And, and yeah. yeah, that's. <laughs> I see. So personally, just growing up, uh, I've always had teachers, you know, they would they'd talk about just horrible disasters and they they specifically remember most of my teachers in uh, elementary school and middle school. They would always sometimes talk about 9-11 and they would be like, oh, I remember mm -hmm. exactly when, you know, that happened because it's just a huge event and it's just absolutely terrible. You know, throwback to this day where uh, this saga shooting was happening. Do you remember that day? I mean, what was what was going on for you? Yeah, that day, it's like, it's it's pretty much the same thing for us. Um, like with 9-11, like we remember exactly what we were doing. Um, I happened to be at school uh, at the time because I had a first period. This happened, um, for most people on campus, they, they come in during second period. A first period is optional, but I was in mm -hmm. marching band at the time. So we had to come in for first period. So... Uh, I remember it started, we were on the field and we were performing our second or second movement of our show. And our teacher, our director, he, he was on the, on the stands because that's where he instructs us from. And he came and he said, and he, I just remember um, we were in the middle, everything was fine. And he said, guys, there's, there's an active shooter on campus, drop your stuff and run. And at the mm -hmm. time, of course, we didn't know that it was not campus. The information was pretty crazy. Um, we were going off of what the staff told him in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it was, there was an active shooter on our campus. So we thought, <laughs> we thought, yeah, we were, we were like out in the open. We we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to get, we're going to get shot. And so that, that like, those emotions really do stick with you. And it's hard to forget exactly like, it's hard to forget what was happening because it's just so traumatizing. It's going to be permanently a part of you. Yeah. So after, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know if you want to get too nitty de nitty gritty on the details, but um, I don't know. What, what were you thinking? I'm fine with it. So okay. I honestly, like, this is just my way of like coming out with it because um, it's been something like really hard kind of to deal with that I finally just now feel comfortable with and it it's is a little bit about it. It's a little bit over a year since that's happened, right? Yeah, it is. It's been uh, maybe, yeah, a little, a little more than a year. So I think last month was the anniversary. I think we've hit a year and a month now. Yeah, it's been a year and a month. Um, so I remember thinking in the moment like, so they always train you for like to prepare for these things, especially our district. Um, they made us do like sh like shooting like a shooting practice where uh, like uh, just drills if something was going to happen. And it's very interesting because we practice in the classrooms like we're going to be in class, but we were outside. So of course my first thinking, my first thought was, I'm exposed. Um, mm. I'm going to get hit <laughs> like. 
because our band teacher, like the people that were on the field, the techs were like, okay, run band, that's the only place we can get to. And uh, the band room is not near the field at all. So we were just like, we're gonna have to run in the middle of active shooting. Um, so I remember thinking like, okay, well, I'm gonna grab my phone and I'm gonna drop all my stuff here where I am and just take off. And so I just remember thinking like, I drop my stuff and I run over to my bag and I pick up my phone and I immediately started running and the thoughts in my head was, be aware of your surroundings. Like, so, like you're gonna get hit if you're not careful. Just like, what is the escape plan? Should I just run off camp now because we're right here and stuff like that. And I always remember um, before any of this happened, I remember being like, whenever I was at school, I was like, yeah, there's a shooter on campus. I'm running out. If I'm in this period, I'm gonna run through here. But when you're in the moment, like my original plan was to go through these ducks because we have ducks near the, the campus and just sneak off like that um, if I was on the field. And it didn't happen because in the moment you're so stressed out and you're yeah. only thinking survival. You're, you're thinking I'm going to need cover first and not let me run off the field and get off campus. So that was really my thoughts um, right when our teacher told us that we need to go. How long, Orjana, were you on lockdown for? I mean, you went back to I mean, on campus. You hid in the locker room, I believe it was. And yes, we ran into the locker rooms. And then you stayed hidden for how long? I believe it was. It was so weird because it felt like we were there for like hours, but I believe it was only two hours we were on lockdown for. Mm-hmm. We happened the the gym teachers happened to know that we were out on the field. So they opened the locker rooms for us and we ran in. And we were in there for, I think it was two hours because um, once it ended, they told us, oh, you need to re- you need to go to your fourth period. And of course we started at first period. So I think it was and two then, hours. And then when you got to the locker room, what, what did you do? I mean, were you able to like text your parents or anything or? So in the locker rooms, they happened to be like, no service at all. Um, so mm-hmm. I ran into the locker room and what I first did was see if there was any service to my mom and be like, yo, uh, there's a shooter on campus. Um, but what ended up happening was when we realized there was no service, it was just like, like, okay. I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna just take attendance, see who in the band is here, take note of everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know why, like they were like, okay, take notes of everybody who's in here like in your section. So I did that. And then it was after, after checking, like if there was service, I tried to get to the school Wi-Fi, which it blocks everything, but you can bypass it with a VPN, but they ended up shutting down the Wi-Fi, which was mm. very annoying. <laughs> yeah. Because of course, yeah, you're thinking you're like, why are you shutting down the Wi-Fi? Like we want to contact our families if anything's happening. And, uh, yeah, they shut it down and it was really, really hard for uh, the first hour because nobody really knew what was happening. Do you think they purposely turned off the Wi-Fi or? We know because like I can't say really, I, I don't work in the district, but um, it was it was strange because the Wi-Fi for me had been working like I do so like play watch videos on my phone through the wi-fi because it had i didn't have data uh for some time so i would like the day before it was working for me i was able to connect and it was very strange um that that specific day it wasn't working and Mm -hmm. then um the next days after it was off for like the rest of the week of course because we didn't go back to and then when we did go back it was back so it was very interesting uh that the wi-fi happened to go off when all this was happening but I think it might have been maybe that um, everybody immediately was trying to get on it and maybe mm. that had a factor. Gotcha. I was, I was going to think that maybe they, I don't, I don't know, for whatever reason, they probably felt like, oh, if we turn it off, you know, we won't cause a whole bunch of panic for the parents, which mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. But uh... Yeah. Or John, <laughs> yeah, what? Immediately <sighs> after. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, immediately after it was... Uh... It's like immediately on the news, um, 
other classes were actually watching it happened to stop and they turned on the news um because we have the screens and stuff and parents of course were already freaking out uh, showing up on campus and stuff it was just it was just harder for us in the locker rooms because we had no service so mm. for an hour we didn't know what was happening and we we for an hour thought that there was a shooter on our campus and that we were gonna die <laughs> yeah that's that's insane and yeah, absolutely sick mm-hmm. I mean, what, what was the first thing you did when you got out of that locker room for, what, two hours? Yeah, um, it was very traumatizing to be in there. Um, like, when when you're in a panic, like, the first thing the first thing you do, of course, is just you're just like in shock. So um, I try to I tried to like help a lot of people because, of course, I like to be I like to be kind of like the mom for others. So it was just helping people with panic attacks and they're freaking out. And of course, like that just takes a toll on you. And then finally, after an hour of just this whole like fear, we find out, of course, somebody um, ended up getting service and found out it was at Saugus. And then my friend actually, um, her par- her parents were at, at the hospital that the kids were sent to at first. And he was like, look, the shooter's here. He tried to kill himself everything's fine you're fine because at the time the news was, was saying that he was running down and trying to go to our school um so the first thing like I really did when I came out was just like like just try to call my mom and be like yo can you come pick up <laughs> please yeah. and can my friends come because we were all very scared and um it was very stressful a very stressful situation and nobody wanted to stay in there and the school at first did not want to let us leave. So my thought was like, I was like, mom, if, is it okay if I can just run off campus because they don't want us to, they don't want us to leave. Can you just come here? And I go with my friends and we just run off and you can take, take us somewhere because we really didn't want to stay there. Um, so that was like my thinking right after. And then it was, um, I also have a sister and it was very ironic because that day, my mom actually took her phone away. <laughs> so mm. um, it was contacting my sister, like, we're going to run off campus. So come with me. Luckily, we didn't end up doing that. The school ended is your up sister at the me and my, my friends. Is your sister school. at the same school as you? She goes to the same school as me, but uh, I actually have a cousin and one of my really good friends goes to Saugus. Gotcha yeah (laughs) yeah it's a crazy it's it was it's very awful like talking about it like I don't know if you can see I'm like shaking because just reliving it is uh kind of (laughs) heavy yeah no I'm I'm also sorry for just kind of like hounding you about it um I definitely don't think it oh I don't mind you're certainly helps you're fine (laughs) um or Jana, I mean, it's it's been a uh, almost over a year. How has this impacted you within that year and extra? Well, um, especially like right after it was immediate trauma. Um, I I asked my friends who we also had to go into the locker rooms, and because we we immediately were told that we had a chance that we were going to get killed. We thought that we were going to die for like an hour. It really, it was, it was different kind of for us than the people that had the service and immediately found out, oh, it was at Saugus because we actually did live with the thought, like experience the thought that we were going to die. So immediately after it was like, I couldn't sleep. I would, uh, I would have nightmares that like, Mm. The shooting actually was on campus um just reliving the moment and for like a week uh we i don't remember which exactly the day it was but i remember they canceled school for the rest of the week and it was very hard for a lot of my a lot of us and my friends i remember we would sleep and we'd wake up at like two in the morning and all my like some of my friends would be awake and they're like yep nightmare again um and it really changes the way you think. I wasn't scared at all to really go to school. 
because everybody here that lives in Santa Clarita would always lived with the thought, this would never happen here. It's never gonna happen here. So it's very interesting because after it did happen, we're like, it did happen here. It could happen again. And just the, th the thought processing of whenever you're in a public location, it was just, if something happened here, like how can I run out? Like, what can I do to escape? How can I better my safety? I found it harder to trust people. I remember going outside and whenever I'd see a person, I'm like, okay, they would pro they they they're likely to want to hurt me. They might want to hurt me. Uh, things like that. The thinking that everybody was out, the world was out against us. Um, it was very stressful. I remember like I didn't want to be alone at all. I mm -hmm. was very much very attached to my. Parents. I didn't want to leave them at all because I'm like the the thought like that I I would have a lot was this could be the last day I'm gonna see them. Um, this mm -hmm. might be the last day. And so that just like that thinking really takes over your, your life. And I'm lucky now that I have, I had a good support and people in my life to be like, Hey, it's going to be okay. And help me out. Um, because now I feel, I feel like I'm kind of back to where I used to be, but you're, of course, you're never going to fully be the person I was before this all happened. what what in particular there's like the the changes do you see do you have like any life changing thoughts how, how am i trying to explain this do you have any epiphanies from what's happening besides like oh you know um i mean you s now correct me if i was wrong but you said like oh you're not as scared as scared anymore because you i don't know you're, you're like facing the fears or is that, do I have that right? Yeah. Um, just talking about it, like, makes me feel a lot better because it was really hard to speak out about it at the time because um, when this all happened, when it was fresh, it was, of course, the media was like, oh, they all are advocating for gun control and this and that. So, like, just kind of coming out and just saying, look, this is our story. This is what happened. It, it still affects us to this day is just makes me feel a lot better um, mentally and instead of just suppressing it down because when you suppress it, um, it, it really just boils and turns into hatred and anger. And, um, and I feel like now that we aren't going to school anymore and it's just all online, I feel a lot more comfortable um, mm. speaking about it because I don't live with the fear like of going to school and thinking, oh, this could be on my school. Do you think they'll change, you know, with, with this whole vaccine coming out and, you know, as time progresses, people are going to trust it more and more and we'll see if there's any known dangers for it. How do you, do you think they'll change when you, when you go back to school for on person, on, yeah, in person? Well, uh, when I when we did go back to school eventually, uh, it was again like I as I said, I always thought that I had like an escape plan, but it was just like going back, and I feel like if I went back, it would be um, like I would personally still feel unsafe, uh, looking for ways out in every classroom. I don't think it'd be as bad as it was when we did go back to school. Because when, I remember when we did go back to school, there was a lot of uh, a lot of talking about it. Is this going back and right things... after the sh the shooting, or is this going right back? I mean, like, are you doing like a hybrid right system back. right now? Yeah, we're we're um we're not going back to hybrid simply because we're part of LA County, so uh, gotcha. we're still doing online. But when if we do go back, I feel I'd still have the same thought process as I did right where we ended up back when it happened. Which is mm -hmm. just like, how can I how can I get out of a situation if somebody tries to come in into our room and harm us? Man, I'm I'm sorry that happened to you, Arjana. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, I mean, everybody has the scary. I feel like a lot of people always have the scary parts in their life, and it's something that we need to experience to grow. 
And it was very humbling because prior to this, I felt like I was invincible. Like I could, mm. anything could happen to me and I'd be okay. But it's just very humbling to like, even though we didn't have it as bad as Saugus, which, which it actually happened on, still like humbling to that, you know, you have some that you you do have to cherish life a bit and that you can't go you can't and I feel like it's kind of like kind of sad like depressing to say like oh you don't have like you never know when your time is going to be up so it's always good to be cherishing life the way it is and that's like what I feel I really ended up getting out of this was was thinking like I do have to appreciate life a little bit more because before before this happened I was going like whatever I don't care (laughs) well I can waste my life and I'll be happy but then getting the new perspective that that uh, you really never know what's gonna happen it just makes me feel like I'm going I try to cherish every day now and I try to have like those things that make my day really happy and important to me because I don't want to waste anything now yeah it's I think there's a a time period like like a grace period after you know, any traumatic event for, I don't know, whatever it may be for you to really take it in and, you know, of course, just process that. And sometimes it might take a year, it might be a, a month. But I think definitely if you want to be better and be a little more happier and that should accept everything, you have to take it all in and after you process it, try to move on. I mean, as I, as we said, it's it's been a month. I'm sorry, it's been a year and over. Month, how yeah. have you? How have you been moving on? How have you been cherishing your life, Orjana? Well, I've been doing a lot more things that like I never really was comfortable with doing. Like specifically oh, yeah. taking this interview. Like <laughs> um, I know I mentioned this before we started. Was uh, I I actually d- used to interview people for video production and stuff like that. So. I never expected myself to want to be sitting down at the interview and like being interviewed myself. So this is just a way of like kind of releasing those emotions. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of performing because uh, I feel like that's really my escape, which is like singing. Of course, like (laughs) I, I, I try to like keep these parts that I think of like a lot more hidden because of course I don't want people to really be sad when they see me doing something <laughs> like when I'm singing a happy song so it's just a lot of more being more open and exposed about things that I do and uh yeah it's of me that I, I don't feel I never felt comfortable with doing so that's those are things Adriana do you have any life dreams or anything you want to accomplish in life uh it's a it's a really big ambiguous question i know but uh i think it's fun to think about them i know and so personally i've always been a goal setter actually um yeah i had one i i'm not going to go into specific details with what what they are because um i don't want to be a because if i say exactly what they are people will be like oh i know who that is Mm. um it's like uh specifically just a university I want to go to. Uh, I set these goals. They're not like life goals, but I like to set minor goals to achieve. So um, one that I actually set um, when this was happening was making it into this or this group that I really wanted to get into. And I ended up actually getting in, worked harder. Congratulations. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> very, very happy. Um, things like right now it's getting into a specific university which let's hope it happens I mean like yeah fingers crossed let's hope (laughs) uh and then some maybe like longer life life dreams would be maybe make something that helps better this world leave my own imprint on it people will know me for which is, I mean, it's very general because I don't know specifically how I want to do it, but there's always <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah, you want to make an impact, leave a legacy yeah. behind. Yeah, I think it's the best thing I can kind of give um, specifically, like, <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel very lucky. And so I want to just give back to 
every everything that's kind of been on my side per se <laughs> mm -hmm. and just uh doing so that people will appreciate and will help make others happy because that's what i really like i want, want others to be feel good and be happy <laughs> what's next for you Organic. what's next for me yeah uh, i don't know i've always been i've been trying to uh dabble in some costume making recently okay uh, as i Why? said i like to i like i like the arts I want to do everything. <laughs> I've already done singing, dancing, playing instruments, acting. I'm like, let's go into fashion. <laughs> I've already tried it a little bit. So like, let's see what I can create with that. Um, maybe like, actually, I, I also want to get into business and economics is something. Mm. It's kind of funny because people, I do talk very like, in person, I do talk very stoically, like, mm. and people always tell me they're like, oh, "You're gonna, you're gonna be a business lady," and so uh, I can see it. Just getting, <laughs> you don't know me when I talk business or politics. <laughs> I do. I, it's very funny. It's very, it's very funny for um, people who always see me as this artistic person, being like. I'm going to start investing in stocks because if I save now, I'll end up becoming rich and I'm going to buy a house. And <laughs> it's very funny. It's very, it's very interesting. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think those are, those are what's like really, really next is just kind of seeing how I can improve myself and use the gifts that I have received. Do you know how to sew? Yeah. <laughs> uh. My, uh, Lovely mother taught me how to sew um, <laughs> when I was making a Halloween costume. <laughs> nice. I think it's really interesting because I was just talking to my friend group about this and there are all, a lot of them were saying like, yeah, I don't know how to sew. And I was like, man, you don't know how to sew? And I feel like it's, it's <laughs> so easy to learn, but uh, and it's such a, it's a good skill to know, but it's, I think it's just funny how something so simple, you know, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, I actually didn't know how to sew until... Uh, three years ago um, <laughs> and it was really funny because it was for this Halloween costume I was uh making my own Jojo Siwa spin-off which oh, I thought was God. super funny um and uh, I remember being like mom mom I don't know how to sew <laughs> and she was like she was like no te preocupas hija <laughs> which means don't you worry daughter <laughs> and so she like ended up teaching me how to sew and it was funny it was really good that I learned that because because I remember um, back to my band, they were like, we need help. Uh, can anybody here sew and <laughs> help fix this costume? I was like, yes. I got you. <laughs> I know. I know how to do that. Yeah, it's 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 good knowledge to have. It's, <laughs> and I always like learning new things. I know that you can ask me like the weirdest things and I'll be like, or I'll talk about the weirdest things just because I like learning for no reason. <laughs> if that's the case, what is... What's something you know a lot about, which is really weird? Like, I know a lot about the B-movie, like, the B-movie script. I know I could recite the whole, like, first scene. Anything <laughs> come up for you? Anything weird for me? Yeah. Uh, Star Wars. Uh, I know a lot mm. about Star Wars. I have a Star Wars shrine, like, right here. Um, <laughs> have you watched um, The Mandalorian? It's really funny. Yes, I actually stay oh. up till one in the morning just to watch the new episodes. <laughs> I'd love to talk about it, it was... but I also don't want to spoil it, but it was good, huh? It was so good. Man. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, yeah, it's funny. I, I know how to write in the Arabesh, which is a Star Wars language. Mm. That they use. So whenever you see fancy scripts and stuff, um, I know how to write in that. Uh, funny. Do you know how to read? No, well, a lot I, mean, about... I take it. I take it. That's a dumb question. I yeah. I asked that. <laughs> it's I'm actually it's funny because I can write it but I'm very slow at reading it um but it's great because whenever we go to Star Wars land uh, Galaxy's Edge <laughs> at Disneyland my sister will be like what does this mean and I'm like oh it means this I remember one story she uh we we they gave her like a bathroom pass and she was like is this say anything or is it gibberish and it said something like oh don't destroy the bathrooms you alien like something like that <laughs> just so much um I used to do this thing where I would um uh, I, I, I'm a very much a big memer, so things like the B-movie script and stuff, I, I do memorize. 
Um, and I remember having like a simp of the week for one of my classes and nobody would know who they were because I would always write it down in the Arabesh. And recently I picked up learning Noah, which is the Mandalorian language, which is okay. <laughs> crazy. So yeah, I don't know a lot about Star Wars and random history facts too is... <laughs> shoot me, shoot me like with some the, random history facts. My favorite history fact is I don't remember the name of I, I don't remember the name of this. Uh, but basically, there's this one country. It's very tiny in Europe, and this was during mm -hmm. World War One. And they didn't have an army, but they wanted to defend a um, a border. I don't remember specifically the name of the border because I just remember it for one thing. They left with eighty men and came back with 81 because they made an Italian friend. <laughs> so they didn't actually go to battle. They came back with an Italian friend, and that's, like, my favorite history fact that I always bring up for no reason. <laughs> I love that. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> wish I would... I have to search that fact up so then I can start sharing that to people. Yeah, if you just look up um, Army Leaves with 80 Men and Returns with 81, <laughs> it's gonna, you're going to find it. It's so funny. It makes me really happy. <laughs> Noted. Jana, if you could tell the entire world a thing or multiple things, what would that be? <laughs> um, do you, uh, it's like like I said, I'm very much a goal setter, and yeah. it's uh, don't let people tell you what to do. Um, mm. Make your, your own path. Uh, I've had people in my life tell me like, "Oh, you're not gonna be good at singing. Uh, give up on it. Don't ever do stuff like don't." Ever for dance things like that and um i was like you know what screw you <laughs> i'm gonna do what i like and yeah. um and you just keep moving forward with whatever you like even like hard stuff like the whole shooting thing happened um something that helped me really keep going was the goals that i set for myself so never stop um it's okay if you have a bump in the road but if you just keep going forward eventually you'll find that flat road and You'll make your way. <laughs> Do you have any like mantras that you say to yourself to keep going? I have <laughs> so many. I, it always changes. Um, but as of recently, it's stay cool, calm, and collected. I mean, what about you? Oh, that's a good one. Um, one that I've always had uh, my whole life is by Master Yoda in um, oh. <laughs> Empire Strikes Back when he tells Luke, <laughs> Do or do not, there is no try. And that's something I always think about. Uh, one that recently I picked up actually yesterday was no yeah yesterday because i watched okay all three star wars films uh the originals as they said i'm obsessed um was um it was when luke says i believe he says i don't believe it and yoda tells him that is why you fail and that was like i was thinking about that because specifically recently i've been like oh i'm not gonna make it i'm not gonna do whatever I want to do. It's not going to happen. People are going to tell me, like, I'm not going to succeed. And so really hearing Yoda just say, that is why you fail, made me, like, change a lot of my thinking. And it's crazy because only yesterday I heard it and I was like, wow, that's that's really good. <laughs> Damn, I, I needed to, that. <laughs> uh, I need to change my whole life now because of this. Ah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Yoda speaks, speaks facts. I mean, he's not <laughs> 900 years old for no reason. <laughs> uh, and I don't. I, I want to talk about it, but I know I really should not, should not to spoil, but with, uh, <laughs> with the Mandalorian, you know, the baby. Yo, uh, I was uh, so sad. I'm not spoiling anything, but I'm just going to say, man, I, I so badly wanted this one character to show up, but, you know, I'm still happy with what we got. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> so happy with what we got. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you after, but <laughs> I'm still sure. I'm still so excited. Just <laughs> I'm going to rewatch the whole series soon. <laughs> and now we have to wait a whole year for season three. Ugh. Yeah. And another fun. thing is um, I have like a month until Cobra Kai. I also love Cobra Kai. <laughs> I have not seen it yet. I have it down. You have but... to watch it. <laughs> it's so good it's fantastic so yeah that's like the next big uh thing where i'm gonna be binging <laughs> is cobra kai i'll uh i'll consider it more because i definitely have it listed and i've had one other person tell me so two people telling me must be a sign or jana <laughs> no literally it's it was so good i was going into it a little bit skeptical because my dad he loves 80s karate films um oh, my dad uh, we too. used to just watch like 
I used to watch just like bad 80s karate films like the iron monkey and stuff like that <laughs> and so I was just like a karate kid but it was actually really good so very much recommend it to anybody who's <laughs> listening watch Cobra Kai and watch the Mandalorian Jana to close of, I mean, of course thank you so much for talking and chatting with me it was very fun to not just hear the story about the shooting and what happened after but just to hear more about you do you have any last minute thoughts and anything you want to shout out? Yeah. Um, don't let like bad experiences get you down. Um, mm. Everybody's going to have like those, those like one, one thing. I don't think that this is specifically going to be like my one and only life changer. Everybody's going to have those moments where they're going to lose all hope and feel like everything's out to be against them. But, you know, another uh, another quote I can't well specifically and it's by Tom Hiddleston he says like you know it's going to be really hard and then you just keep moving forward putting one foot in front of the other and then before you know it you're look back you that you climbed a mountain that's another really good thing so just if if you're struggling reach out don't feel it's the end all be all because if you keep putting one foot in front of the other eventually you'll you'll make it through Beautifully said, Orjana. Do you have any, <laughs> anything you want to Thank shout you. out? I know you want to. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I do want to keep secret, but if you recognize my voice or anything, uh, I do happen to have a TikTok and a YouTube. So, oh. if you find out who I am, <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting. But for now, I'm gonna keep the mystery alive. Right on. All right. I mean. Thank you once again for chatting with me, and I'll keep you in the loop for what is to come. But uh, thank you, Regina. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew May and Bailith, for the tracks I use on today's episode. Of course, thank you, Orjana, for being the guest on today's episode. I'm glad and happy that I was able to share your story. And even more so, I'm glad I gained a new friend out of this. Now, Orjana said it perfectly. If you're struggling, you have to keep going. And you have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know, some strides... Some of your strides will be bigger than others. You'll have bigger steps some days and smaller steps other days. But you have to keep going. There is hope in the world. There is beauties of the world. And yes, there is so much pain. There's so much going on and it's catastrophic. It's chaotic. But we're gonna pull through as a community as humans, as friends, as people. If you want to check out more of me, other than Milky Narder, the podcast itself, you can see behind the scenes and what's up with me on my Instagram at underscore spence underscore r underscore. You can check out the other exclusive content I make on TikTok and YouTube. Please check those out. It's free, so I don't see why not. I know that's a tough one. But hopefully you're able to take something out from that. Sorry that there's like a huge delay. I got locked out of all my files, but I'm still trying to recover them. But hey, that's just how it is sometimes. You know, sometimes you're going to have huge fallbacks. But as we're trying to said, one step, one foot in front of the other. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to let you go. But until next time, this was Milky Narder episode 20 with Spencer Chan. Bye.